CNN crime and justice reporter Shimon Prokopes and CNN's Kara Scannell. They are standing by. Uh, Shimon, first of all, what are you learning? Well, that's right, Wolf. We've learned that Mueller and his team have really intensified their focus into the potential flow of money from Russia into the 2016 presidential election and whether the Trump campaign colluded with Russia. Uh, now, we know that investigators have recently targeted at least three oligarchs. And the sources tell us uh, that the FBI stopped one of them as he landed in his private jet at an airport in New York. Uh, they questioned him and even used search warrants to search his electronic devices. And then investigators, where we've also learned, stopped a second Russian oligarch who also recently was traveling here to the U.S. and questioned him as well. And Mueller has also asked a third Russian oligarch to voluntarily hand over some documents. And Wolf, uh, some of these people who have voluntarily handed over documents, we're told, have basically had no choice uh, in that because some of them are doing business here in the U.S. They have been forced to cooperate with the special counsel. Very, very interesting. Carol, we know it's illegal for foreign nationals to give money to U.S. Uh, political campaigns. So how potentially could some of these Russian oligarchs get around that? So one area under scrutiny that sources tell us Mueller's team is focusing on is that they're looking at any investments that these oligarchs made in U.S. companies or in think tanks that have these political action committees that then donated to the Trump campaign and to the inauguration fund. Another area of scrutiny that we understand Mueller's team is asking questions about are whether Russians use straw donors or Americans who can legally donate into the campaigns uh, to avoid this issue that prohibits Russians from donating directly into the U.S. campaign. So these straw donors, the money would be funneled to them uh, first, and then they would make the political contributions, which would be legal from them, although the question is, how did they get the money? Uh, Mueller's approach uh, in wanting to question these Russian oligarchs, what does that say to you about his investigation right now? And this is all recent. Right. A lot of these approaches occurred in the last month, we understand. And uh, what, but what our sources are telling us is that they believe that this could be sort of the wish list. Mueller's team has already reviewed documents that they have easy access to here in the U.S. because they have jurisdiction over it, but that they might be trying to get information from the Russians in the hopes that they will provide it voluntarily. Now, we also know that a lot of these stops, at least the ones at the airport, are relatively aggressive. And um, experts we've talked to say prosecutors are doing that for the element of surprise to try to catch these oligarchs off guard, hoping they'll be more honest and truthful, and also gaining access to their phones before they can wipe them clean of any potential evidence. Very interesting indeed. Uh, do we know, Shimon, if Mueller is interested in these oligarchs potentially as witnesses or could they down the road be charged with an actual crime? All right, so certainly right now, based on Kara and uh, my reporting, uh, there is every belief that they are being sought for as witnesses. They want to know uh, how some of this money was moving around. There seems to be some indication, uh, at least for, towards the special counsel uh, as part of their investigation, that uh, they have raised concern whether money was being uh, handed to U.S. citizens to donate into the campaign, maybe the inauguration as well. Uh, but everything that we know right now certainly points to that they're being asked to come in as witnesses. Uh, but down the line, who knows what could happen if one of them lies. Uh, the other thing that people have asked us is, well, they're not U.S. citizens, the oligarchs, they don't live here. Why would they have to cooperate? Why would they voluntarily come in? Or in some cases, why are they being forced to come in? Uh, come in? And basically what uh, we've been told is that they, a lot of them are doing business here. They have Some of them have apartments here while they're not full-time residents, but they are doing businesses here. They're doing a biz business in other countries. Uh, and therefore this, if they don't co cooperate with the special counsel and potentially face charges for not cooperating, uh, they would interrupt some of their business. And there's no connection to the, what, 13 other Russians who have already been indicted uh, by Mueller and his team? Well, there's no indication that there's any connection, but we don't know that, right? We know that uh, Russians have been indicted. Uh, we certainly do expect that there probably will be more Russians down, uh, indicted down the line uh, for the DNC hack. Uh, but in terms of these individuals that we know about, uh, there's no indication that they're in any way linked to any of the Russians. And, and those 13 them. Russians who have been indicted, they're not in the United States. They're overseas, exactly mostly right. in Russia. And they probably will never see, uh, you know, will never be arrested and will probably never see, uh, the, the, go before a judge here in, in yeah. the U.S. They're not about to be extradited That's to right. the United States by Putin. All right, guys, thanks very much. Excellent reporting. Uh, this is the first time we're learning about Mueller's interest in these Russian oligarchs, as they're called. How significant is this? Well, I think it's significant on two fronts. One, every time we learn something new of what Robert Mueller is looking into, it's an expansion 
of this overall probe. We're learning of a whole new avenue of pursuit. Not a narrowing and not a coming to an end, perhaps, but, but we learn, oh, here's yet another avenue pursued. So I think that in and of itself is significant. But on the substance of what is being reported here, Wolf, you know foreign nationals are not allowed to donate to political campaigns, nor if you set up a straw donor kind of system where you're funneling money in, is that allowed to have with foreign nationals' involvement? So uh, th this would be completely illegal for the Trump campaign to have operated in a way, if it is, uh, to receive money from foreign nationals in, in any way whatsoever, whether directly or indirectly. Jeffrey Tubin, is, uh, is this the type of activity the Mueller team uh, is uh, carrying out based on what's called open source information? Or the, do you think they've, uh, they've discovered very secretive confidential information that, from their perspective, justifies this, these types of questioning? Well. Uh Prosecutors often start with open source material, and open source is just a fancy word for stuff in the media. I mean, the, the prosecutors learn from the work that we do that there may be suspicious activity in this place or that place, but then they use the unique powers that they have, subpoena powers to banks for, for financial records, for example, to see if there's proof. But it is certainly common and appropriate uh, to start with open source material, but, I mean, the great thing about being a prosecutor is then you have the ability to use the grand jury subpoena, whether it's for individuals or for documents, um, to find out whether those reports um, lead to any criminal, criminal behavior. Well, you know, Biana, you're an expert on Russia. How do you think this news is being received over there that wealthy Russian oligarchs come to the United States, they're stopped at the airport, and they're questioned by law enforcement? Well, Wolf, I'm curious to see who these oligarchs were and their names. But having said that, an oligarch is an oligarch, right? That means they have close ties with the Kremlin. Uh, look, this, this would be a setback for Vladimir Putin. That's what people have been saying from the get-go, that the best way to get him uh, and get under Vladimir Putin's skin is to go after the oligarchs and their money. Because remember, there is a deal that the Kremlin has with these oligarchs. They do the dirty work for the Kremlin. They get to keep their money and live a lavish lifestyle, uh, like having businesses uh, and spending money uh, abroad. Having said that, though, uh, it's another reminder why the Trump administration and the the president himself were so premature to uh, tweet that and, and state that they were in the clear and that there was no collusion when Robert Mueller uh, reported the 13 indictments of the Russians back in February. Because remember, it stated that there was no indications that those Russians had any uh, involvement with Americans knowingly, that Americans were not uh, complicit knowingly, including those in the Trump campaign. Uh, many people said, wait, that's a bit too soon to celebrate. Remember, this is just one part of the investigation going after uh, cyber operations. Uh, this is a completely different avenue going after money directly. Uh, so this is something that, that, that would upset Vladimir Putin. Having said that, though, something that would benefit Vladimir Putin, that would make him very happy, is news that the president uh, was thinking about or would like to leave Syria sooner rather than later. That is something Vladimir Putin desperately wants. That's why he's meeting with the Turks and why he was meeting uh, with Iranians as well, because that is territory that he wants to control solely and it looks like the president is willing to leave uh, sooner than a lot of his generals are, are willing to do yeah, so. That's absolutely true. He'd like to get out, uh, but his generals are saying not so fast, but he says very soon.